This beauty is the LT Wright Large Northern Hunter. It's a Canadian belt knife, uh, and it's on loan to me from Kepmuk Nesshart. I will link him below. He uh, He's an active contributor to Thursday Night Knives, and we were talking one Thursday Night Knives, and he brought this knife up, and I said, oh my gosh, I love Canadian belt knives. I love the general design. I'd love to check yours out. So we did a little exchange. He's checking out my Bark River Knives Shining Mountain Bowie, and I'm checking out this uh, Canadian belt knife. And uh, I got to say, I really, really like this knife. Now, I have... This has been, I'm not a hunter, and, uh, you know, maybe in another life, I'll be a boar hunter, like Odysseus, stout-hearted Odysseus, and I'll get that, uh, get that scar on my leg and all that. Uh, but for right now, I just like hunting knives. I like hearing stories about people hunting, uh, but I've never gone out on a hunt, and uh, it's just, I guess, you know, circumstance or whatever. Uh, but I can see, I can tell how good a hunting knife this would be because it is great in hand, feels great in hand. You could use this for all sorts of camp chores and such, but it just seems like it would be a really good knife to skin an animal. Again, never skinned an animal before, um, but from what I've heard from friends and people who, who know, this seems like it would be really good. And why do I say that? Because it's got this nice, long, continuous belly. It's not so huge that you can't choke up on it and use it like this. It's got a point so you can get in the skin, but the point is kind of... Well, we'll get to the point in a minute. It, because I also feel like this would make a really good fighting knife. Uh, sorry if you hear that sound. One of the ladies uh, started their showers upstairs, so it's going to be noisy for a second, but um, it just seems like the point is in the right place. It seems like the shape is good. This handle is so comfortable, and uh, and it's micarta. And not all these uh, LT Wright uh, Large Northern Hunters are in micarta, but micarta is such a great material, even when it's smooth and semi-polished like this, uh, for for grip, uh, when especially when wet. And so imagine your hands are covered with blood, which is already slippery, and viscera, which is slippery. And you're, you know, you don't want this thing to slip out of your hands. You will cut yourself because it's a damn sharp knife. Uh, but with micarta, you get that grippiness. Um, so, uh, all right, you're you're now you're sitting there. You're saying, Bob, you're talking out of school. You've never been hunting. How do you know? So, uh, point taken. But um, I am a smart person, and I can extrapolate. Uh, from information that's been given to me and gleaned elsewhere. So I, I can see how this could be a great hunting knife. Okay, all of that out of the way. I also think this would be an excellent fighting knife. Okay, Bob, why do you say that? You're not a knife fighter either. No, I'm not. Uh, but I've done some hypothetical training. By that, I mean in a martial arts studio with people who are not trying to kill me. And I've done quite a bit of that. And you get used to... Um, certain handholds, certain grips, things that uh, you look for. At this knife, I look at this and I hold it in hand how I would hold it if I were, you know, uh, training with friends and training to knife fight. And I would hold it like this. And what I really love about this is that it's got that nice, long, continuous belly, which would be great for slashing a sucker or slashing a foe, if you will, in a fight. But what I really like is how, where the point is. The point is right center line. So, I mean, um, on, on, a, on a thrusting motion from an outside arcing angle, like a, in, in the system I've trained in, like a 7 or an 8 or a 5 or any sort of thrusting angle, that point is exactly where you want it. Uh, I'm, I think that's probably coincidental, given the fact that this is not meant for that. I mean... You know, this is this is a belt knife that's meant to be carried and used for all sorts of uh, hiking, outdoors, trapping, hunting tasks, camp tasks, and that kind of thing. Um, and that purpose, uh, that use doesn't always lend itself to an awesome sort of fighting tactical style knife. Uh, to me, I think this would be excellent. You even have a bit of a guard here. Uh, for a thrust that would stop your hands from sliding up, but also this handle design would stop your hands from sliding up because of this hump and this hump and the curve 
and the angle of the handle, you know, how the, how the handle kind of uh, arcs out, up and out of the blade, that also keeps it in your hand. It keeps it firmly nestled against this back part of your palm. Okay, well, that's my two cents on how you can use this knife. I mean, obviously hunting, that's what it's intended for, but I also feel like this could be a tactical knife. All right, that has been said. This is a full tang. This is AEBL steel. And uh, I like these um, rivets. It's riveted on there, as you can see. And you've got a uh, brass lanyard tube. Beautiful finish, beautiful fit. Everything is, there are no gaps anywhere. And uh, man, this is just so nice. So Kep McNesshart was, uh, generous enough to loan this to me to check out, which I'm grateful for. But he said, please do send it back by October. Uh, so I got to get this in the mail to him uh, because I'm going to be using it this year for hunting. I think it's been used a couple of times, a little bit here. You can see some scratches on the blade, uh, maybe in certain angles. But uh, he's going to be using this this season for hunting. Good luck. I hope you bag a bunch of whatever you're going after. I guess deer is what you go after in the fall. Um, I like looking at grind lines on knives. You can see the history of it being made. These are like brush strokes on a painting, you know? You can see all of the micro elements that compose the main, and I really like that. Plus, I gotta say, when you see the texture of this, you know, this sort of broad texture of this canvas micarta next to that striated texture of the, uh, of the, of the grinder, grind lines on it. I just think it makes for a, a beautiful look. Here is LT Wright's Maker's Mark. Looks like a cabin out in the woods from which you go out and you hunt said deer. And then this says L. I'm not sure what that is, honest to goodness. I'm not sure if that's just an L for LT Wright or if that's an L for not the left side. I don't know. I don't know what that L is for, but uh, I'm just presuming it's for LT Wright, part of the Maker's Mark. Very smooth, very, very comfortable on hand. And even though it's rounded, very rounded, it does not feel like it's going to turn. You know how like a fully rounded knife handle can turn in your hand. You have no way to index it, no way to flatten it. That's why, that's why you want some sort of a flatness on your blade handle. Totally different style knife, but you want some flatness so that it's not going to turn in your hand. You know, your hand is a, is a curved, round, organic thing. If the handle is too curved, round, and organic, they just fit together too well, and they'll slip around. But this one has enough flat on the handle, um, in addition to the really nice, sumptuous roundedness of the handle, uh, that it's not going to turn. It just, just feels totally solid in hand. All right, let me show this against some other uh, common fixed blades, or or maybe even not so common fixed blades. So you get an idea of the size, but also the use. And the way I set it down here, I think is perfect because, um, here, let's put the point on the, yeah. Because this upward curve of the handle is what really makes this knife and this sort of leaf shaped blade. Now this one looks a little different from some of the others I've seen in that the point is slightly more acute. That's why it looks like a great thrusting knife to me. But uh, um, this to me is the perfect way to lay it down because you have the point and the and the finger choil kind of on the same line, center line, and then this really shows how the handle flares out. All right, let me show it with a couple of others. Here it is with the um, Spyderco Serrata. Kind of similar size. This is much heavier. This is a this is a big boy. This is drop forged, I believe, 440C. And you can see that massive distal taper from from pommel to tip, good outdoors knife. Also kind of a rounded handle, also stays nicely purchased in hand. Uh, here it is with one of my favorites, uh, the Topps Tex Creek. Probably less of a hunting knife than this. I think this is more of a general outdoor use knife. Um, and let's see, here it is with the new and awesome Ritter Hogue RSK3, the Mark III. Uh, similar size, similar, lots of similarities in this handle shape, uh, sort of that teardrop shape. Um, this one, 
obviously has a lot of texture in it for grip and is a flatter handle. This one, which is rounder and untextured, does rely on the material, I think. Uh, this micarta gets so grippy when wet. Uh, but I do see that you can buy this in a lot of different handle materials, exotic woods and such. And let's see. Here it is with a, let's call it a spiritual cousin. Uh, the Bark River Knives Boon 2. Now, why do I say spiritual cousin? I don't know. LT Wright and, and uh, Bark River Knives to me are kind of a similar, I don't know, th totally different operations, but... I don't know. They 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 make knives in a in a sort of older school fashion uh, that resonates. These knives are nothing alike, uh, but they're both stout-hearted outdoors knives. So I thought I'd show it with a with a Bark River, and then last, let me show it with a very common hunting knife, knife that I love, the Buck One Nineteen. different price range, different style, different everything, uh, but a lot of the same uses. This one I know is used a lot as a hunting knife. Um, I'm not sure if you skin an animal with this knife. I guess you do. Uh, it seems a little big, but I, I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that it is marketed and has for years been used as a hunting knife. I'm just not sure in what capacity during that hunt. But uh, so there it is with a buck 119. Anyway, Ketmuk, thank you so much for loaning this to me. I really have appreciated it. It's so nice. Not only is it the first Canadian belt knife I've experienced, but it's also the first LT Wright knife that I've experienced. Um, besides at Blade Show, I did check some out at Blade Show. Uh, uh, and uh, what I mean is LT Wright made. Uh, when I ch checked out the Nordsmith knives, um, knives with... <laughs> David C. Anderson, he had a few on him, and that's who he has make his knives, L.T. Wright. So, a beautiful, beautiful selection and a gorgeous fixed blade. Uh, if, if, if money were no object, I'd have one in my collection for sure. But I have so many other knives to buy before I get this one that I doubt whether I'll ever have one. <laughs> it's so sad. And now i got to send this back to him. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that leaf-shaped blade. Looks like a little barong, got to say. A little bit of a barong in there. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm going off now at the mouth. Take care.